Welcome to the Zanbergen Report, where wealth strategies and investment wisdom collide, featuring your distinguished host and certified financial planner, Bart Zanbergen. Hello, everyone. I'm Letitia Burbaum. Thank you, Paul, for queuing us up. As always. <laughs> All right, thanks for I didn't know you were waiting for my response here. Okay. <laughs> uh, thanks for tuning into the Zambergen Report, a Wealth Strategies and Investment Wisdom. And I'm so excited to have Sue Parks here in our studio. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited. So a little bit about Sue, and then I'll go into a little bit about why we're here today. And um, she's an amazing woman, by the way. I just wanted to point that out. And she is the president of the Orange County. United Way and um, currently and she's had a phenomenal past and some amazing um, awards and accolades behind her to make her this just amazing person in um, in our community and really being able to give back um, just to name a couple Orange County Business Journal has named her woman of the year and uh, the pioneering award from local chapters of the National Association of Women Business Organization and we call that around here and we know that as NABO but just just uh, saying it exactly what it is. And um, um, some other really other amazing organizations, um, Girl Scouts leader leadership recipient, also um, Orange County 2018 is top 100 influencers. And there's additional things that you are also known for, and I know that we're going to talk about it here, um, but also you have a certificate of special congressional recognition for your work with United um, to end homelessness and homeless initiatives. So I know that we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we talk about um, United Way. But um, welcome again. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. It's really nice to be with you, to Letitia. Oh, thank you so much. Do you want to share a little bit about um, United Way as a big organization, and then we can kind of dive into um, locally Orange County? Oh, absolutely, and. Um, again, it's uh, wonderful for me to have this opportunity to kind of share what's going on with today's United Way because mm -hmm. sometimes people, uh, we've been around a long time, right? And yeah. so sometimes people really d know our name, but they don't really know what we do. And yeah. just as a uh, form of clarification, every United Way is its separate own 501c3. So we're all separate nonprofit entities. I work for a local board of directors, volunteer board, and who care deeply about this county just like I do. And so every United United Way has that different um, character because they're all led by a local board and they're all focused on what the most important human needs are in their community and those aren't all the same across the country which yeah. is why the United Way is so special but the great thing about it is we are a network and so we can share best practices we mm. can help um, companies who want to bring purpose to employees around the world we can help make that a reality in a very easy fluid way for the companies because we are a national network so we're local but we have the power of being global yeah that's amazing my first encounter of United Way was when I was a child and I was sharing with you or like maybe my first job and I was you know they're saying hey give and give to United Way and that was the organization that that company gave to and so um, you know there wasn't a whole lot of direction like hey here's your form here's your <laughs> pledge fill it out give how much and pick the charities you want and then off you went I never really understood where the funds were going or a whole lot about United Way but um, I know there's a lot has changed over the years. Maybe you can talk to us a little bit about um, where, how it's changed or how it's evolved and how Orange County specifically, some of the the different, is it is it like that now? I mean, I know that they still have involvement at your employers, but how has that changed? Well, many of us, myself included, <laughs> had grown up in, in my corporate life yeah. where United Way was an important part of the corporate fabric of yeah. our our company ethos mm -hmm. and we do work with 350 companies here in Orange County but it's different than the old days I think there had been this impression that maybe you felt a little pressured to give yeah. and we don't want anybody ever to feel pressured right? right and so we want people to give 
and and help our community because they love the community and they believe in the work that we're doing. Um, so that definitely has changed um, through the years. And I think it's partly because at the very beginning of time when people started giving, um, the internet wasn't here mm -hmm. and it was not everything done online. And so you got a paper pledge, right? And the wonderful thing about the United Way is it realized that all these people really, it might have been that first five dollars that you gave but for many of us it was the first time we ever felt we could give yeah. through that paycheck and it's such a great feeling yes. and it still continues to be a great feeling through this uh, to this day what we ensure now or hope we do and want to do more of is really tie where the money's going so people know the investment counts and what mm. difference it's making in the community how I got involved here locally mm -hmm. is a long time ago, in 2001, 2002, I had um, I had been giving to my company at uh -huh. the time, and I had somebody from the United Way had tracked me down. I have no idea how, <laughs> so it was well before everybody knew each other's cell phones or email addresses. And anyway, asked if I would help to consider starting a women's giving circle here in Orange County. That didn't exist, and at the time, yeah, there weren't very. I didn't know of any other or could find any other women's giving circle in the community. Mm -hmm. And there have been a couple have been started by United Ways in Baltimore and some place, it might have been Charlotte, a couple places back east. So I talked to the women that started them, and they were talking about this amazing opportunity to get women more engaged in giving. Because mm -hmm. a lot of cases, women weren't the ones being asked. Interesting. And, and you know, our hearts really yeah. care about other Absolutely. people in the community. Yeah. So, to that end, I didn't know very many people in Orange County because my corporate career kept me on the road all the yeah, time. Right. But I said yes, and I said yes, and through that I learned more about all the amazing work that was going on mm. then even, and I feel like we've evolved so much from there, but I also met all these incredible people who, successful people who wanted to give back to the community, yeah. and some of my best friends to this day are those women that I got involved with oh so many years ago after over a common purpose. That's amazing. I love that. And, I, you know, I feel like you hear that more and more, but now it's such a big organization, especially the women's portion of the organization that people are really uniting together in all different industries to be able to give back locally here or in Orange County. Do you want to share with some of the, the local projects that we're working on? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just going to, I'll follow up on the women's thing because I am very yeah, excited please. about this. And for anybody out there wanting to learn more about this work is you certainly can go on unitedwayoc.org and uh, click on our um, our volunteer efforts and you're going to learn about the women's efforts and we have different ways for women to get involved but and one of the big things oh, oh, go ahead go ahead go ahead oh i was going to say one of the big things we do is an annual breakfast that is an amazing mm -hmm. event to come to and next year i already know that it's may 20th so mark your calendars it's phenomenal love it uh, but what we've been able to do through the gifts of the women and through um donations at the breakfast mm -hmm. is transform a school in Anaheim mm -hmm. and it is pretty darn extraordinary those children um, who many parents um, in most cases they're single parent households mm -hmm. working two or three jobs just trying to get by yeah and they're bringing their children to this initial grade school and we are supporting more just because of the success of the program but we wrap around them. Just if you think about like a school in Irvine or mm -hmm. Newport that mm -hmm. might have a community or might have a foundation. Yeah. They might have PTAs that the parents can volunteer all day long or do a lot more for their children through financial yep. means yep. besides the volunteering. There are schools out there the parents just can't. They don't have the resources. And yeah. so in this case, the women have wrapped around this initial school to use it as our pilot. It's Paul Revere. It's pretty darn amazing. And mm -hmm. if you want to see the cutest video in the world, go on our website and see it. But these um, children were struggling to read at a third grade level. And mm -hmm. if you can't read by the end of third grade, you can't learn. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to read by, the, um, by third grade. And so we... Um, beefed up their reading programs. All the children have Chromebooks so they have can learn in modern technology. We've helped with a financial literacy center for the parent if the parent's going to lose their home or can't worried about getting tires on their car. We can help them along the way so that child stays in school and learns. And because we have been now a constant presence that mm -hmm. we're going to support them, the children are thriving. This one little girl the other day was, was sharing that she now reads 
at third grade, she's reading it at a sixth grade level. That's, That's so extraordinary amazing. at that school. And those children are going to go on to be very successful, I feel it. But that's one yeah. of the programs. That's one of the things yeah. that the women's group focuses on is education. So just so I can understand this a little bit better, because you're referencing the school, you guys adopt a, just one school here, in, it's where you started, here in Orange County, and then you kind of added additional support in all different areas that they needed to be able to help and enhance, like you're saying, the reading and the education and the extra programs in the library, all of those extra things into just one school and really trying to um, boost one school. Now, are you doing this because you have it in one school? Are you seeing measurable, like you're saying, from third grade to sixth grade? That's amazing. But are you see, are you being able to track and measure some of these impacts that we're, that you're doing based on this the funding? Yes. We are very <laughs> much into the metrics and measuring everything we do. So I was giving you one example yeah. of where a specific uh, program where the women's efforts started. We call that an impact hub where we okay. put everything all together. And this has to be done in really close collaboration with the leadership of the school. And mm -hmm. so we um, somewhat are experts in terms of working with um, the various schools around the, the county and, and understanding different needs because we want to learn from them where their gaps are, what their students need, what the parents mm. need. So we're not just saying, oh, here, here, it's a blanket take this. Statement. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's no, customized. We need to make sure we're hitting the needs of that particular mm -hmm. uh, school. So we have more schools like that. We've been blessed to have corporate partners like at Edwards Life Sciences that mm -hmm. saw what we were doing in that school and and has taken on helping us build the foundation for an impact hub of a, a school, Washington Elementary in mm -hmm. Santa Ana. Um, there is Eaton is starting a similar program. It is so exciting to see this continue, evolve, and grow. So but great. let me tell you, like on education, and that's one of our four pillars. Okay. So without getting too wonky and all the yeah. things that we no, measure. But just it, tell me the four pillars at the very least. Okay, I will. Yeah. Um, there, education, we start off in a strategic plan in 2014, mm -hmm. which is called Face 2024, and it's called that because it was a 10-year plan. Okay. With programs, like I just describing um, in grade school, but then destination graduation in middle school and inspiring students who have not had anyone in their family able to help them understand the purpose of a, a career or mm -hmm. going to college mm -hmm. and giving them a vision of what their life could be like. Love and that. so we do destination graduation and get them excited and, and bring in and take them to companies or have speakers come in, just immerse them in mm -hmm. what it's like in real life and in, in being part of something maybe outside of what their norm yeah, is. Something might not have exposure to. Right. And then in um, high school, Youth Career Connections, which is a infusing real life work experience in education. And so we actually have companies mm -hmm. that are taking these. Um, rising seniors into internship programs, but not before. They've gone through interviews and they've done resumes and so first great. generation students that are getting inspired like crazy. All of that to be said, Letitia, in the five years, we were able to cut the high school dropout rate in half. That gives so me think about chills. That. That's I know, amazing. I know. And this is not just the work that the United Way does, yeah. but we're big believers in collaboration. Mm -hmm. And when somebody invests in mm -hmm. us, they can be sure that we're looking at it holistically to drive to a measurement that's yep. going to lead to an outcome that's going to be sustainable. And that's why I personally, as a business person, love the United Way. It's not... I love the the chills and my heart goes yeah. pitter patter with all the good things that we're doing, but that the fact is it's still it, measurable. It, it's measurable. Yeah. It's strategic. Yeah. It's it's um, it's making sure that it's not just one. Um, not one view, but we bring together in some of these collaborations, there might be 60 partners from mm. nonprofits mm -hmm. to the schools themselves to a consultant if we need it. And we bring together who is needed, mm. the companies that are partners, all together and run this ecosystem. I love it. It's really, really magical. Yeah, it's so great because you're just seeing like this one pillar as education. You're seeing that you're starting from the very beginning in the elementary and you're like you're saying you're flowing all the way through and you're setting them up with if they don't have exposure to it or if they do additional um, experiences to set them up for success. That's so great. I love that. Share with me some of the other pillars that you guys are working on. 
Well, one of the things that we are excited about is our work around financial stability. Okay. And so we have a measure. We, everything we do is measured with an outside index, so they're not the Sue Parks measurements like, oh, look what we did, right? This sense is for accountability. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. that. Um, so we have uh, financial stability is a big area for families, okay. and we had a goal to improve that by 25% in 10 years, and that was also achieved in five years. That's amazing. Amazing. And, and is that just Orange County? It is all just Orange County, all, okay. uh, all that's going on in Orange County. Um, and so in that particular case, we know that certainly some things have happened in the market um, in terms of, you know, um, increased salaries and all that. Yeah. But also we do things like we we leverage things like the Earned Income Tax Credit Program. So mm -hmm. that is a way that we train 500 volunteers to help low-income people, most who are earning like 22000 a year. Think about that, wow. living in Orange County. Wow. But help get them get their um, tax refunds back because they have to be working to earn to but you help get with that. the filing as we, well right we help with the filing and we help them get that earned income tax credit back which could be three to five thousand dollars which might be the difference of them getting out of debt and on their way to prosperity that's huge and that has a multiplier that's crazy mm -hmm. because we maybe mm -hmm. invest 700,000 in that a year of mm -hmm. the so if you were donating and I know you are so yeah. thank you yeah um, that if you're investing in our work we pull back in the community 21 million dollars wow. um, getting these it's an amazing rate of return <laughs> amazing rate of return right anybody would be proud of that yeah. and yeah. it's it's really uh, wonderful so there are other programs that we do we have mm -hmm. again financial literacy centers in schools because we don't want a child to leave school and we yeah. want to help their parents not become homeless yeah. probably the best homeless prevention program for families out there is spark point OC mm -hmm. and we lead those and so I talked about education pillar and the financial stability pillar and we achieved those so just so you know, again, we just didn't rest on our laurels. We upped those goals. So we're in 2.0 mode now. I and love so it. we're going to close the disparity rate of graduation rates between schools, the haves and have nots, quite frankly, in terms of we know what schools are graduating. 85% mm -hmm. were schools um, in more prosperous areas of Orange County are graduating like 98%. We want to close that gap. And I think the community wants to be partners with us. So yeah. if your education is your passion out there, please uh, get involved with that. And on financial stability, we need to improve it another 25%. So we're all in. So and get back that in going. there. We are back <laughs> in. We are back in. And probably one of the things that most people ask me about, and you maybe have read about is our United 10 homelessness mm -hmm. effort. Mm -hmm. uh, that one has been really quite a journey and there's so many yeah. things that I think have gone that we're moving in the right direction but mm -hmm. there's still so many of our homeless neighbors that are um, need help and yeah. so we are all in on that issue and I can talk more about that if you'd like. Yeah no please do I mean I know personally I've helped raise you know um, contributions or funds just to be able to get simple packets together. And, and we're talking like socks and, or, or um, bat, like bags or a flashlight, just little simple things that people don't even think about. And we would go and hand them out, right? And that was just, I mean, that was, it was a whole orchestrated um, event, but that's just one thing that I experienced and it was incredibly humbling. I mean, I don't know if you wanna share some of the things that we're doing to make that impact. Yes. So we have a huge ecosystem that we're leading around United 10 homelessness. And it started because we realized that the business community hadn't really been as engaged when mm -hmm. we started. And we started looking at best practices. Another thing we do is look across the country who's doing something well. And we found, for example, Orlando, Florida, that had cut their street homelessness in half in three years. Wow. So we wanted to really understand what was going on there. Yeah, what are they doing that's great? <laughs> and one of the things that they have done is they've, they've marshaled, garnered support from the private apartment community. Mm -hmm. And so we launched with a, one of our dear partners, a pilot mm -hmm. called Welcome Home OC. So we actually got some funding from the County of Orange to put in a landlord incentive program because if I'm homeless and you're not, yeah. I want you to think I've been walking around on the street with a voucher. I, if I've gone through the assessment process and everybody mm -hmm. that is homeless that's getting help has been assessed, and again, most people 
who need help, mm-hmm. have a disability, have mm-hmm. something, you know, that they're not going to be able to get back on their feet in, yeah. in a long-term scenario without help. Okay. So I'm walking around going door to door, but I don't have credit. I don't have money for first and last right. month deposit. Absolutely. And so it's a huge hurdle. A huge hurdle. So we're taking that away. So through our generous mm. donors, we've been able to um, fund first and last month rent that we've been able to put a damage mitigation fund. We have donors that have helped us with um, providing funds so every place has to be furnished mm-hmm. uniquely and based on this, the disability of perhaps that um, tenant, but also the um, size and configuration of that particular apartment, right? right? So we've put this all together, and in some cases it's come from, like I said, the County of Orange. and. Just this last month, if I can tell you one amazing please, thing. Please, please. Yeah, so we were called by one of the housing authorities. There are five, there, excuse me, there are four housing authorities here in Orange County. Okay. And they were like, Sue, we have 30 people who have been looking for a place to live for months, in some cases, years. Wow. And we have to get 30 more families housed by the end of August to apply for up to 300 more vouchers for HUD, for help 300 more families, up to. Yeah. And, but we have to get these 30 houses and we haven't been able to do it. So we went out to um, current donors, new donors, we went out. You're up for the challenge. And said, (laughs) let's see if we can fund this program because we didn't have money just sitting around to fill that gap. Yeah. And, Lo and behold, in 30 days, we had 73 people that came together and raised $500,000. Amazing. And then we have, I've been getting chills because we have landlords, property owners that have come forward to say, we want help. And so we're getting the the people Mm -hmm. housed. And so person the other day that I was learning about, um, this is just, I don't know, this always just brings me... um, it's sad, but there's a woman that has been living on the streets taking care of her disabled daughters for 12 years. Wow. Her disabled daughter, 12 years she's wow. been living on the street. And through this program, she was just housed, That's her and amazing. her daughter. That's amazing. What a gift. Yeah. So there's a things going on, small, large. Yeah. We will help with diaper dries. We'll help put together the welcome home packages. Yeah. But in this case, we actually had this generous donors that helped fund this program so 30 more people are going to be able to live in a place they can call home. home. That's amazing. And people just take that for granted. I mean, everyone's like, oh, they're, you know, you get so busy in your day to day, but this is a real struggle for people in our, and I just want to emphasize this is in our local community. People don't even realize how many people are homeless and are going without and don't realize where they're going to get their next meal and where they're going to go. And this is, this is right here in Orange County. And in, and I have a lot of, um, I, I have a lot of people that I connect with every day that, you know, we give, they might give money globally because there's maybe in their mind, there's other issues, but I just really want to be able to, um, draw attention to this amazing organization and all the things that you guys are specifically doing right here locally in Orange County, making an impact of your community and creating a change for the next generation. And these are the people who are going to be, their children will be around your children. And, and, um, and the reality is, is we're helping one another just increase. Why not? You know? Exactly. They are neighbors. There is so much misinformation. So if somebody out there wants to know the facts, we did a cost study with UCI. Mm-hmm. We, again, just did in ourselves. We hired, we um, commissioned UCI to do a definitive research study on the homelessness situation here in Orange County. And yeah. that, again, is on our website. Okay. So uh, unitedwayoc.org. But to your point, it's it's close to... It's over 70% of the people that are homeless are from Orange County that or lived here at least yeah. 10 years. That's how they got homeless in the first place is they lost a job. They yeah. didn't have the resources to keep paying their rent, so they lost a place to live. And normally there was some other trigger factor in their life, yep. which could have been, for a woman, domestic violence. It could have been yeah. an illness. It could have been the death of a spouse. Mm-hmm. Something spiraled out of control, and they didn't have a network yeah. to fall back on. Yep. And so it could happen to Anyone. any of us. Yeah. And I'm yeah. working with a realtor right now that wants to help, and her brother is homeless. And she is like... 
driven because no matter what she's done, she's not been able to help him long term. Yeah. And everybody we're helping is yeah. we're helping along the way with the case management, the yep. care, the caregiving through the amazing network of service providers out yeah. there. But I just really do want to help yeah. shake that myth. Yeah. There is, there is the other side that if any of us lived on the streets, mm -hmm. you or I, Letitia, for any period of time, the constant stress would take a toll on us mentally. Yeah. And yep. who knows what yep. we might um, go to for um, to escape, right? So true. And so there's a lot of reasons, but at the end of the day, it's a small portion yep. of the amount of people living here in Orange County, and we need to help. And yeah. there are ways to help in a sustainable. Yep. So please yep. get involved. Yeah, and, and just so you know, like my, my why is – my aunt was homeless here in Orange County, and she had a great job. And like you said, multiple triggers happened, lost her job, and had turned older and had a midlife crisis and just didn't know what to do and literally found herself on the streets. And I couldn't help her, and she didn't want my help. And so um, didn't know really how to help, but I got myself involved in local organizations to be able to realize that there was a need and I can give back to an organization that be, that's able to um, – help and and maybe you can share different ways to help but I know I personally I volunteer my time I volunteer on one of your your um but your little the smaller boards the um and participate in that and then I also give financially and I encourage other people to as well and it doesn't mean that I'm encouraging everyone just to give to United Way but giving in general is such a huge like it's my way of saying thank you and giving back and I know I'm making a change so that's my my personal why but um, everyone has a story to get to them to get where they are today but maybe you can share where people can um, how they can contribute or how they can volunteer here locally yeah well what and um, thank you for sharing that story I mean yeah. that's just Everybody, and like you said, we yeah. all have something going on in our lives, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, so we always talk about it in terms of time, talent, or treasure, right? Mm -hmm. And so some people can give all three. Mm -hmm. um, some people maybe at different points of time you have more treasure than time or mm -hmm. more time than treasure. And we always love um, like talent, like you allowing us to have a chance to interface with you. It's wonderful. So thank mm -hmm. you for sharing your talent and time with me today. Um, I think... The volunteering, there's opportunities in terms of the folks that have time. We have different opportunities through our partners, nonprofit partners. So, mm -hmm. again, they can go on our site and they can learn of different volunteer activities. Yeah. Specifically for United Town Homelessness, we need positive people who really want to impact change and mm -hmm. become housing champions. There's a plan to build 2,700 permanent supportive units around Orange County. Those would be... Um, apartments that come with case management to help people who need help. Yeah, we need those built, and so people might be passionate about that, and we can help train them. And how do they become a positive voice? And they could go on United to End Homelessness dot org mm -hmm. and learn more about that. And more will be coming out. But just to let us know you're out there and you want to help is huge. Yeah. And then they'll be specific. We did a, helped with the diaper drive last year, yep. the welcome home packages, and all those different things that go on. Um, and there's volunteer activities in all of the different work that we do. So we're happy to do that. And we can help you with other nonprofits, too. So yeah. it's easy for us to do and to share because we work collaboratively in so everything great. that we do. Yeah. Um, so that is one. Obviously, for donations, um, there is a donate button on our site, but mm -hmm. we really want somebody to learn what we do and get involved. And so you can learn, again, on the site. You can come to one of our events. We always have different events going mm -hmm. on where we're mm -hmm. sharing what work we're doing. If you have a company and you want your employees to feel your passion and that there's purpose and mm -hmm. there was just a report the other day about how important purpose is to a company these yeah. days yep. and to the success of that companies and retaining and growing their workforce mm -hmm. we offer so many ways to help with social responsibility the the opportunity to get involved is endless in terms of how we partner with companies yeah. and and make their social responsibility real and impactful for their organization and then we have donor circles like i said the women's group mm -hmm. we have a our major donors group for those people out there that want to collaborate with other people who care about the community and mm -hmm. do major legacy kind of building work, mm -hmm. we'd love to partner with you and help people make yeah. that happen. There's such 
a great feeling to know that your money is going in into something that's impactful, but something that's going to be sustained and yeah. something yep. that's going to make a difference, not just now, but in the future. It's so amazing. And, and we're out of time. I just want to, maybe if you have one real quick statement to say your ultimate lesson learned and to share with our audience as we are just getting ready to cut out here. Well, from being from the corporate side of life and now mm -hmm. um, running this wonderful organization mm -hmm. in Iowa, Orange County, I just encourage everybody to wake up with purpose. Yeah. I can't think of any better way to get on and whether you're in your corporate life or um, have the ability to volunteer or you're retired and want to give, um, reach out, let us know how we can help bring more purpose. And by doing that, you're going to help people here in Orange County, the place that you live, work, and play, have a better life. I and I thank that. you for that. Thank you so much for being on the show, Sue. I appreciate it. Such a pleasure. Thank you, Letitia. It was so much fun. <laughs> thank you. Tune in next week for the latest edition of the Zanbergen Report, Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Catch up on our recent shows by visiting bartzanbergen.podbean.com. The Zanbergen Report is also available on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Interested in being a featured guest on our show or have a question you'd like to hear us answer? Email podcast at bartzanbergen.com. Bart A. Zanbergen, CFP, and Letitia Burbaum, AIF, are registered investment advisors with Optivist Inc. and registered representatives with Gramercy Securities Inc., member FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services are offered by Optivist Inc. under SEC registration.